Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another production of the Cross-Platform Baseball League. It is another weekly roundup here for you in this early season of Season 14 in the XPL, and it's being brought to you by myself, Dwayne, and in the booth with me, my good friend, AAA champion, AA champion, now XPL official member. What's up, Ox? How are you doing? What's up, Dwayne? Uh, D-Money, good to have you back here, man. Uh, good to uh, have somebody in charge of the production here tonight, other than myself, and uh, glad to be here for the first roundup of the year. Yeah, last week's heck up, so we'll forget all about those, and we'll go through this roundup just like we always do, ready to rock and roll through all kinds of content, all kinds of exciting stuff uh, for all of you who have come to show up tonight and see it. We got the rankings, we got Stackhouse storylines, we got a little impromptu hot take thing going on that'll be exciting, and of course our plays of the week. Uh, we had a lot to go through for the first week, uh, and some fun and exciting things there. So without further ado, I think we can go ahead and get this moving. We're going to go ahead and start with the AAA rankings this week. And down there at the bottom, a player who has not quite played, you know, quite enough games to really say much for their season or their career in the XPL just yet. It is M. Barry 0-2. Yeah, Dwayne, we're actually a uh, couple of Oxbox uh, welfare checks are going to go down tonight. The first one of the night's going to be on M. Barry. We're going to have to check in on him, see if he does intend to continue playing. See just two games played and uh, not a lot of activity from him, so we need to... Uh, you know, check in on the Hornets. There's someone in the XBL that we're also going to have to check in on, but more on that later. Yeah, an interesting dichotomy of games played and games unplayed early in this uh, this season 14. This is the most we've seen uh, the AAA really kick off in, in many, many moons. And uh, on the opposite end, there's players that are still severely lacking. We'll see how that remedies as we move into week four. Let's slide up the board here to rank 16, 17, and 18. There's actually no movement among these teams here from last week, but the three of them have shown some improvement. Yeah, the AAA is absolutely popping right now. I mean, everybody is already well into double digit games played, which you love to see this. This is the start of week three, so right Right along where they should be, just about everyone across the board, um, other than, you know, one or two guys. But, yeah, not a lot of movement here in the back end of the rankings yet. Like you said, some big wins coming this past week for all three of these players. So, um, stagnant ranking-wise, but they are adding to the win column, which you love to see. Yeah, we see Joey picking up his first wins of the season against Heisman and Tezzy. Uh, and then uh, you see Black Snowbird and the Black Roses picking up their first against the Wise Guys. A little bit more success for the champs and under the bus so far. But we'll look to see the three of these players make some noise as the season goes on. And as we get into that playoff bracket, you know the early rounds of AAA usually do produce a good few upsets from that end of the, of the rankings. And we'll slide up here to 13, 14, and 15th. Here we see a decent dip for Heisman and his uh, Houston Stars a logo. I really don't want to be looking at right now that's okay at least it says stars on it not astros we got the central jersey wise guys a fictional team from a fictional place needing to do some improvement and we've got the uh the pirates and rise and fall new and blue uh hasn't picked up any wins in the recent times man Dwayne, you know say what you will but all three of these logos looking great look at all the circle logo gang yeah uh, coming in strong here at 13, big circle 14, gang 15. And uh, these are three veterans of the game right here. You know, these guys off to slow starts in their season, but certainly capable of beating anyone. We have Rise and Fall, who's split with Black Coffee. Uh, D. Sill is off to one of his worst starts possibly ever, but always a very strong player in the AAA. And then Heisman, we've seen. Uh, me and Mist actually talked about this in silence. Um, Heisman has the ability, a lot like Tezzy, to, he's a giant slayer. He can really beat anybody. You just don't know what you're going to get out of Heisman. We saw Heisman beat Fireball Max, and, um, you know, he has some big wins to his name. Um, and then he also has, you know, some losses like Mystery Man. I think 10 owed him once, and then, and then he split Mystery Man. So I think uh, Heisman's definitely a player to watch going forward. He has that, that giant slayer capability, but also... You know, kind of plays to his opponent's level. So we'll see how they, you know, they end up doing as we go on. Yeah, these are three players I think we're going to see some improvement out of for sure. Uh, 13, 14th, and 15th right now. But uh, as we go through the season, they they age like fine wine. Really, the three of them, honestly, all all three of them, they will uh, 
find those wins, find those giant slayers, especially like you said, Heisman, and, and see that improvement. It'll be exciting for the middle portion of this AAA table with the talent in it this season as we look at more of the players that'll be involved. In P Funk and his rookie all stars, they're ranked number 10, followed by Mystery Man and Eduardo, tied at rank number 11. Yeah, and you see two guys. Uh, honestly, Dwayne, you got it. Honestly, really, you know, three, four, five guys in a row right there, as we saw on the previous screen, some league veterans uh, to the AAA that are not off to their ideal starts, as we see Eduardo's taken a couple of beatings this season. And Mystery Man, who, you know, was looking really good coming into the year, I think is off. He's not off to a bad start, but he was probably hoping for a better one. And, uh, you know, the the new guy, P-Funk, PB&J, he's come in and, and played very strong so far, uh, some, played some good baseball. So, um, you know, with the round robin, with the with the trip play, everybody making the playoffs, obviously you can't sleep on anyone. But a bit of a surprise, some of these guys are in the, you know, the double digits of these rankings. Yeah, we'll have to see some improvement, especially, you know, from our veterans. I think, you know, you're looking at Eduardo, who played in a AAA World Series. Uh, Mystery Man, who's now got a lot of pedigree under his belt. So we'll see those two push forward. All three of these teams with five victories, all three of them within a relative amount of games underneath the, the most games played in the AAA right now. So you'd have to think winning five games out of their sample size, decent amount of games, especially, you know, P-Funk only playing nine. Mystery Man only playing 11, and Wardo a little bit more at 15, but uh, there will be some improvement from these players. It's just going to be about winning games against players over 500. If you can snag any of those, that'll only ever help. And uh, keeping the runs down, this is probably Eduardo's worst pitching season, a player who's known for his pitching. 7.96 runs allowed per nine. If you look at Eduardo's bars, I just don't think he can get away with pitching that week of a build, but, uh, you know, he makes it work uh, the way he does. But, you know, Dwayne, I think this speaks to there's a lot of parity in AAA, but it also speaks to the strength of the you know the upper half of the league when you've got guys like Mist and Eduardo coming in 10, 11, 12 range. Uh, that speaks to you know how strong the top half is. Yeah, and there's some as new faces and old faces one. as we're gonna slide up there. Yeah, it's uh it's an interesting group in this AAA. 19 players. It's the most players we've had in regulation at this at this time at least in AAA. So let's see how that keeps going as the season goes on. We'll slide up the rankings. If, Todd? if I could uh, if I could describe AAA so far in one word so far to this point, it would be spicy. Oh, it's absolutely spicy. It's all over the place. These guys got a lot of spunk in the AAA. That's for <laughs> that's sure. That's true, a lot of spunk. And we have a interesting look here at rank seven. No eight, we got a tie at seven and nine. Uh, heavy hitters and Scotty is big moment for Tezzy. Always jumping up in these midseason rankings it seems tied with finite who is kind of falling out of favor but hasn't played a whole ton of games yet and then stabbing crabs with a, a nice 507 and 7 record um yeah i, th I think uh, there's there's a lot to be said about all three of these guys i'm gonna start off with tezzy uh it, that all depends on what kind of internet connection he's on i think right now his internet situation is his home internet is not been the, the best he's had a lot of disconnects a lot of problems and obviously hasn't played great baseball but when he is on it's like his cousin or his brother when he goes over there and he's got the good connection you don't want to play tezzy man he can beat anybody and he's very strong we saw him sweep elron coin the other day so as we saw elron coin on last night on match of the week one of the best players in triple a so you don't want to sleep on tezzy he lost to joey early but now he's off to a six and two start shooting on up the rankings and and finite at three and three but he's played some of the best players in this league including fdz and no name who uh you know he lost some games there but the scotties have put up runs as strong as anyone so i wouldn't sleep on the scotties there they might be a little bit under ranked right here but uh you know again that speaks to the strength of this triple a Dwayne. yeah it's gonna be a huge race for a, a top half finish in this triple a and a really big race for like top five top six you know what i mean i, I think that there's just too many players that are like oh yeah that player is top five player in this triple a like, yeah, there, there can only be five of them there's probably like 10 okay. of them realistically and um, hey stabbing crabs has never played online league play before I, 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 i'm pretty sure don't quote me on that but i believe this is some of his first pvp experience in super mega and off to a seven and seven start in the triple a that's something to be proud of really yeah, it's very, very impressive from a rookie player. Seven wins early in your career. Some people don't get seven wins all season, so that's that's huge for a rookie player coming in, like you said, especially off of offline play. 
Um, we're gonna go ahead and slide up the rankings here after looking at these three teams pretty nice and in depth. We got four, five, and six. BC Ner Neretva Valley, Blue Panther. What a season so far from Blue Panther. He is absolutely mashing and pitching just as well as we always have seen. And following right behind him, another usual Von Aston suspect in the base bandits. No name through eight games early on with seven victories, followed up by Black Coffee, who had kind of a rough week. Uh, started off hot, five and one, now eight and six. Uh, but you see that strength of schedule for Black Coffee, number two. You know Coffee's going to be putting up runs and getting Ws down the road here. Yeah, absolutely. And and here's what I was talking about, guys. When you see these three that, that aren't even in the top three, um, you know, which not objective, but uh, all three of these guys, very strong players. We saw Coffee split with Fireball Max and split with Blue Panther as well. And uh, we've got a little bit more on Blue Panther Later on, and no name, uh, two veterans of this AAA have been here five seasons now and racking up more wins than anybody in uh, the history of AAA. Um, you know, you see no name at 7-1 and one and Blue Panther at 13-3. and three. I, Honestly, they have two of the best records in the league and are obviously two of the best players. They're going to be two of the toughest guys to beat in a playoff series, I think. Um, because you look at those pitching numbers, Dwayne, uh, they're not scoring more than five runs a game, really, but they're holding their opponents to just ridiculous numbers. Yeah, no name under three. Blue Panther with an insane 1.73 runs allowed per nine, 211 batting average against. He has that Von Aysen pedigree, as we've mentioned many a time in the races, in the award races. Um, but we'll see how it holds up for him going forward against a player like No Name and, you know, his favorable shotgun. Right, and that's uh, I believe both players are at Shaka this season, and Ooh. that is how that's how a lot not Shaka specifically, but their pitching is how they rack up these Ws season after season. You know, they continue to be in the top five, top ten players because they're so strong on the mound. They do the little things, and uh, I think that's something the other guys in the AAA who are really good hitters, but not necessarily as crafty all around, they have their hands full with those type of players. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's usually a recipe for success when you can pitch this well. Um, you're looking at a .83 whip, too, from Blue Panther right now. So we'll see if anybody can break that down going forward. He's, he's looking for some record-setting type stuff. And we'll slide up the board here to ranks one, two, and three of the AAA. These players, all well-deserved, all packing in the games, all with a ton of victories. You have the Miami Knights and Fireball Max, the early season favorites in this league followed up by the rookie in fdz guy and his double bogey boys absolutely crushing the ball and then following up another rookie the help duskers and elron coin making a great appearance here early in their triple a rookie season huge huge split on match of the week with max just the other night yeah shout out to these rookies two of the top three rookie players and then max you know following up his strong rookie campaign with a great sophomore campaign here in the triple a started off just on a ridiculous tear still putting up a ridiculous 13 per nine on offense with 33 homers and uh you know his pitching has improved numbers wise so uh you know great job to the start for max but you look at these two rookies Dwayne. i think it's really impressive that they and you know you could you could easily rank anybody on the previous screen or two up here with these guys but i think you got to tip your cap to the start of the way these guys have started off the year yeah, this is a very strong top three to start off this season. We'll see how the playoffs shake out for them because those players in you know that we have already gone over are going to be in that dogfight, are going to make a series out of a lot of these matchups. So, you know, two games is one thing, five, three, whatever, seven, maybe is another. Uh, but we're talking playoffs. We're talking about that down the road today. It's these three right now standing tall. And what really impresses me off the rip here is that they all score but Miami Knights and Max score so much more. But it's you'd think he's you know he's he's got the most runs. He's crushing on the home runs too, probably Ashnod style. You look at these three players; they're within four home runs of each other at any given moment. It's just Max gets so many hits, and that run conversion rate fifty point three percent. Half of the runners that he puts on base score. That's insane. Yeah, Fireball's really not. I bet if you asked him, he wouldn't consider himself a home run hitter. He averages like 20, you know, you're looking at 20, above 20 hits a game a lot of times. And that was so difficult when I played him. It's like, you know, he might not hit a home run every at bat, but how do you get him out? Um, so hats off to everybody who has taken a game off Fireball. But 
you know, I, I can't wait to see how the AAA plays out, Dwayne, because right now it's it's really just information gathering as you play your two game sets against everyone. But the playoffs is where it really kicks up, and and uh, I can't wait to see you know who plays who, who matches up, and who ends up beating who. Um, but great job to all these AAA guys. It's been incredibly active and incredibly exciting so far. Yeah, it definitely has the stage set to be the most exciting AAA season probably of all time in our in our time of doing AAA since season eight. So uh, that's a lot of AAA. You know, we've we've gone through almost a better half of ten seasons of it. Soon enough, it'll be ten too. Uh, so exciting for the AAA to have this much talent in it for sure. Great competition right now. And speaking of great competition, we're going to head to the top competition in the XBL, and that is the XBO itself. We got Dark Raider having a rough start to his season at the bottom of the rankings right now, but you have to know he's got a few solo shots in him to pick up a couple W's and then some as we move on down the road. Yeah, our man Raider's still looking for that first W. Uh, he hasn't played me yet, so, uh, <laughs> you know, if he's watching this, I know we've got a couple of absolute uh, battles in our future coming up we'll see who ends up on top but uh you can't sleep on on raider he led the league in strikeouts last season in his rookie campaign so uh you know the runs are hard to come by for him but he is tough on the mound and uh, he's he's due for a solo shot or two every time he plays so you can't sleep on him but at, at this point his his playoff chances are starting to look bleak unless he turns it around yeah, having only played five sets, he has played some tough players. You can see his last week just passing, playing Lazy and Flash. So we'll see some advancement and some improvement out of these moose as we move on. And we'll move on up the board to ranks 13, 14th, and 15th. We got Ox and his holograms in his first season in the XBL up here, ranked 13, falling a little bit from rank 11, followed by Chronic Lies, who just got into action, split with Wishbone this week and lost to Speedy, up now one spot to front rank 14, swapping places with Big George and the Saints, who split with Ox earlier this week. Yeah, a bit of a surprise out of uh, Chronic Lies. We have not seen them play a whole lot this season, but was able to split Wishbone the other day. Um, and then, you know, losing 0-2 to Speedy, uh, myself and Chronic have both lost uh been swept by speedy as have you Dwayne. you just the get that kid is on a tear right now but um you know i think me, george and i are off to a pretty strong rookie starts and uh other than mama june obviously we're the only three rookies but uh you know we're holding our own so far yeah so far so good for the rookies like we had said a little bit in the triple a you know ox down there already five wins in this early season through 12 games anytime your ratio is you know closer to half you know, maybe a little bit under 500, but you got to be feeling good yeah, through was, that many games was, to pick up some Ws. I was sitting pretty at 500 before last night, so, you know, we're just a day late on, on the holograms, but that's okay. Yeah, tough set last night versus Civilization. Well-pitched 18 innings from Mama Junjun on that match of the week. And thank, shout out to everybody who's been picking the booth up lately real quick, because I have made my first appearance in here since, like, last season's World Series. I haven't really had the time to get in. But it's, it's great to have everybody helping out, making it happen. Thank you all so much yeah, for running Mystery these Man. casts. Yeah, Mystery Man, shout out big time. Stepping up huge, making it happen, along with Weave and Ox uh, with the support. Thank you guys so much. Um, and yeah, just these three players. I think, again, we've said it many times as we're in the bottom of the rankings. You know, we're, we're looking for improvement. We're going to see improvement out of players like this. This is going to be a few of the players in that race for the 12th spot in the XBL that we always have. We'll slide up the board now to a surprising rank number 10 tie here and rank number 12 permatilt and the flippers at 12 dipping a little bit just getting started now this season at 0 and 4 played two of the hardest teams in the league uh web also just getting started through four games split with flash lost to mama junjun in an exciting split for mama and then mike hasn't played a game it's falling in the rankings where are the cooch potatoes yeah, Dwayne, welfare check number two on the night. We called out in Barry. Coach Potatoes, this is your call out as well. Uh, where are you, buddy? We're waiting on you. And 10th uh, is kind of a sleeper pick for Mike. Um, without any games played, it's hard to rank the guy. But if he if you just go off talent alone, he's a top four player. So, um, you know, when, they, when Mike does start playing some games, look out. Um, because, you know, they're as tough as anybody same with Webb and and honestly all three of these guys um you know flippers just played speedy to a one-run game so he's he has the ability to play with or beat anybody 
and Webb does as well, but we haven't seen a lot of games played out of anyone on this list so far, so uh, look for them to get some games in and some momentum rolling. Yeah, once these three players really get started, you'd have to think it is going to shake up the rankings and the standings a good bit. Uh, and we'll slide up to the next portion of it. Some players that do have some more games played in myself and Wishbone tied at rank number seven this week, followed by Mama Junjun at rank nine, moving up from rank 13, above 500, had a really good week last week. Yeah, it, it, and like anybody uh, I haven't played yet, uh, I'm obviously gonna rank ahead of me, but all three of these guys, strong players, and Civilization, like we just said, swept me on match of the week last night. Nice job by the kid, Mama June. We see an improved logo there by the Civilization. Nice job going Circle Gang. And again, a screen with all all three going Circle Gang logos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we see Wish, Wish and Dwayne kind of going back and forth this year. Not off to the start they were hoping to, but but you guys are certainly, uh, you know, there's been a lot of parody in the XBL this year, Dwayne. It's not as top heavy as normal. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of shaking up and a little bit of vacuum, power vacuum for people to try and grab onto. So the race for top six, top four, especially in the XBL, it's going to be really, really tight as the season wears on. You're going to see that reflected in the rankings here as we move into those spots. Uh, and right now, these are kind of the players on the outside looking in of that top six. Uh, you know, myself and Wish, like you said, off the starts that we wouldn't really like. But strength of schedule on the XBL also a little messed up with the uh, the lack of games played towards the bottom half. So we'll see how all that evens right. out. Uh, some really tough matchups for all the players here in this group uh, early in this season. Uh, but from the players that are above us here, and there, there's some really exciting numbers and exciting things to see as we slide up the board. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and here's one of those big surprises. Look at... Pizza and Flash at ranks four and number five, followed by Milky Jesus and the Lecheros from rank 11 up to rank number six. Yeah, all three of these are a little bit surprising to be ranked in the top six. Um, you know, we see Flash, well, really all, all three of these guys not even scoring, averaging five runs a game at the plate. But uh, Lechero's getting it done on the mound, Two, 2.03, uh, you know, ERA looking good there. And Flash getting it on, done on the mound as well. Pizza's played uh, lazy, of course. And then uh, we saw him, we saw Pizza sweep the the Mallard. So big sweep for the Moon Kingdom there. And obviously that epic split the two ball games you guys played on on match of the week was incredible. But um, you know, like like I said, parody. I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily consider any of these three teams stronger than any of the last three teams we just saw on the screen. Yeah, I think more so recency bias than anything and, and, you know, strength of schedule again in play here for these players right now looking hot, looking good at the beginning of the season. The players below them uh, maybe going a little bit more top heavy and, and falling in the standings because of that. But we'll see success from the entire group. Everyone we're just talking about right now, you'd have to say these are all probably playoff teams in this XBL. And, uh, you know, we're wondering right now, especially, you know, in the, from the, in the veterans sort of, you know, stratosphere is this the, the flash that was promised you know is he you know apparently he moved about a foot closer to his his monitor but you know i'm thinking about trying the same thing and, and you know he's looking pretty good yeah we're, we're only four home runs in eight games so not the flash of old in that regard but he you know he has a winning record through eight games so that's certainly something different than years past and he doesn't have to play uh Ash, Lazy, Luke, whoever, you know, the way he used to set up his schedule where he'd, he'd play Murderer's Row right out the gate. Um, so, yeah, definitely a strong start to the season from Flash. But, um, you know, again, where's Mike? Mike I would put ahead of all these guys if, he, if he'd been playing games. But right now I would I would think any of these guys could beat Mike the Kutch um, where he hit to make his debut against one of them. Yeah, there's also, you know, an entire the entire possibility of Mike being absolutely washed upon his return. He's been playing so much FIFA. There's there's really no telling uh, if he's if the washed club is going to make an appearance here in this season or not. So uh, big for the Cooch Potatoes to make a comeback if they do so. We're gonna we'll see if foot, foot eye coordination is the same as hand eye coordination. <laughs> right. Move up to the top three, and here's a big one. Lazy, still at 9-1, and one, rank number one, looking strong to start off another season for the Black Jackals, followed up by Speed Demon, who was ranked four last week, now jumping up to rank number two, an amazing week from Speedy. And then Luke right behind him at rank number three, a strong week from the Mallers, but he's only two games above 500 right now. 
Yeah, it's been nothing but hot takes and W's out of the frowny faces this season, but um, what can you say other than, than just tip your cap to the kid? Because, you know, as, as far as most improved player goes, he's really jumped out to a strong lead, I think, in that category. Speedy just uh, night and day a better player than he was in, in seasons past and, and took it too lazy, just split lazy, and he's been sweeping everybody. So, you know, hats off to the kid, but uh, Luke off to a slower start. We saw him go 10-0 and last season, I think, or maybe even better to start off season 13. So I uh, look for him to bounce back. And then Lazy's just been dominant. You see the ridiculous 11.42 runs per nine and 455 batting average, 31 home runs in 10 games. That's just crazy numbers. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the lazy way. That's what we usually see out of him. But he was thwarted the past few seasons. We'll see if he's going to be back to championship ways this season. If he can, you know, sustain this and keep Speedy and Luke off his trail. I mean, these two players are going to be challenging him this season um, for sure. I don't think Luke has played lazy yet. Speedy split with him uh, the other day. So a lot of interesting stuff here at the top three of the XBL. Uh, you know. I think you had already said that the improvement from Speedy has been insane. Just look at the runs allowed per nine. 2.53. He's up there in that Von Asen conversation as well as the offensive yeah, conversation. Absolutely. So that's that's the recipe for success uh, for him, at least early in this season. So really, he's the one to watch. He's he's being the heel. He's playing the heel and he's playing it right as far as I'm concerned. And I'm, you know, I'm all for it. So let's let's keep it up. Let's see what happens. Uh, with this group going forward and as we move forward now in the roundup we got some stack cast storylines to go over don't we mr ox yeah we do and uh a shout out to wishbone for getting these together because uh you know obviously we haven't had a roundup yet but wish still always ever compiling stats for us and uh he's got some good ones and like i was mentioning earlier uh Dwayne, we've got some some record chasers this season in the triple a yeah, as we go down the list, we're going to see some really interesting stuff in those numbers. Uh, to start us off here for Wishbone this week, we're talking about both leagues reducing their speed. This is an interesting move, considering not a lot changed as far as the rules go going into the season. Uh, besides the balanced build, Speed Demons was the most common team build in both leagues last season and Season 13. That has completely changed with no Demon teams in the XBL and only two in the AAA. The XBL has mostly moved a lot of their points to bolster their bullpens, while AAA has kind of spread them equally between power and bullpen. So interesting moves here from both leagues. Yeah, I know you and I both uh, sacrificed a little speed this season. I went from three uh, or five bar speed in AAA to now, uh, you know, still with an offensive build. But I think you see that across the league, everybody reduced, you got to sacrifice something. And I think this season, People gave up a little bit of speed to improve on offense and on, you know, maybe the pitching staff side of things. But it's incredible how many AAA teams went with the uh, 4-3-3, 2-4-3 build. Uh, we saw a lot of the, uh, that bar set up this season in the AAA. Uh, the majority of teams went with that, I believe. And then um, another thing that a majority of teams are going with is the Sakura Home Park this season. Yeah, Sakura has jumped up in popularity, surprisingly, maybe because of the size of it. But uh, anyway, it's in the numbers. 25% of the XBL is playing at Sakura Hills this season and 16% in the AAA. The most that it has ever been in either league, considering the amount of players, too, that we have. Uh, more so than usual, 16 in the XBL, 19 right now in the AAA. Uh, you know, 35 players, that's a lot of Sakura Hills. Yeah, and you love to see it. It's aesthetically the the most beautiful park, in my opinion. And uh, I love to see the jump. You know, last season we saw way too much Shaka sports turf. So, you know, great move going to Sakura. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, you love to see it. I think it's a beautiful park. And uh, yeah, like you said, it's nice and spacious, pitcher friendly. Yeah, we'll see how that plays, you know, going forward. We'll see a lot of Sakura in the playoffs. Uh, we probably will. I mean, you're going to have to think. So uh, if there's going to, you know, maybe there won't be so much home field advantage if everyone's got the same home field, right? Uh, <laughs> we'll go ahead down here now to the early season 14 record breakers and chasers. This is where Ox has alluded to a little bit already and some exciting stuff is in the midst here. Uh, Blue Panther has seven wins or now 13 wins so far this season. So this number has changed from set from 75 now to 81 which is enough for most all-time in the AAA. 
Uh, and second place is No Name right now with 72. Each player is in their fifth AAA season and is going to be jostling for that record until the playoffs. So congratulations to both those players being the winningest in AAA history. Let's see some silverware from them now. Yeah, absolutely. And and like you said, the most both of those two, the winningest two in AAA history. So congratulations to both those guys. Uh, five seasons now, veterans. And, uh, you know, hats off to them. But like you said, neither one of these guys has ever won a World Series. So both of them are previous Vaughn Asison winners. Both of them are great on the mound and they're tough at the plate. But let's see if this is the year where one of them puts it together and puts a championship run together. Yeah, you'd have to think the AAA at large, all the veterans would you know, feel greatly for these players if they were able to put together a huge run. Uh, so far, so good for both of them. You know, only four losses between them and, and 20 wins in this early season. So we'll see how they do towards these playoffs, towards the middle and latter half of the season. Uh, now down the board, we have Fireball Max putting up numbers as usual. He's already put himself third and fourth place this season for most runs scored in a single A or a triple A game, excuse me, with the 21 run 21 run victories against Joey and Heisman. These are third and fourth all time. Fireball Max also happens to own the second and first place slots of this achievement with 23 and 25 runs scored respectively in a game. Yeah, so that's crazy. We're, we're basically talking about um, Fireball has the most, uh, the widest margin of victories ever in the AAA. So uh, pretty dominant stuff from Fireball Max. And, and whenever we see him go up against one of the bottom, uh, you know, bottom players of the league, it's really a mismatch, especially when uh, he gets hot. And, you know, just an incredible start to the, to the Miami Knights so far. Let's see if, if some of these better pitchers can slow him down. Yeah, it's, he's already lost, a, you know, four games in this early season. So more than you maybe would have expected with the way he's been putting up runs. Uh, but that speaks to the parity and the competitive nature of this AAA. So we're going to have to see uh, how that plays out for Max going forward. Maybe he'll have another couple uh, games where he puts himself on that and to take over the fifth spot and, you know, the whole top five. That'd be pretty interesting. Uh, he has another additional yeah. record that we want to talk about. I'll go ahead, Ox. Oh, yeah, I was just going to lead into more Fireball Max stats like you were alluding to. We have uh, not only has he been dominant with the stick, but he has a great eye at the dish. He's on track to smash the single season walks record in AAA. Uh, at the time this was written, Max had 67 walks and was on pace to rack up 134 walks, well above the current record of 87 set by Pizza Volcano Season 9 Moon Kingdom. So, like we said, 87 is the current walks, total walk record in a season. And Fireball is on track to nearly double that. So, uh, we'll see if, if he goes ahead and, uh, you know, becomes the most dominant walker of all time. Two little Barry Bonds action going on. Yeah, that's got to help the run conversion rate. Like we said, it's at 50%. That's a big reason why taking all those walks, that kills pitchers. Yeah, they need to walk uh, Roberto Ramos. That guy's an, an instant free pass. So moving on from Max, but staying on the wavelength of the walks, it's Mystery Man who set a AAA record for most walks in a single game in a week one performance against Heisman. An astounding 10 walks taken in that game. The XBL record is also 10 walks in one game held by Ash Mount's coupon in season 11. So Mist and Ash sharing a record. How about that? Wow, that is incredible, and and it's really, it's insane that you can get ten walks in the game. I know there is a, you know, an auto forfeit if you get to a certain point, but I think if you spread them out uh, over the course of nine innings or so, it doesn't actually, you know, uh, spam you out of the game. But we know Mystery Man for his great eye, his great command of the strike zone, and uh, that's just that's good stuff. Anytime you can share a record with Ashnell's coupon. I mean, that guy arguably has the best eye in in the X or you know, in Super Mega Baseball. So great stuff for the Mystery Man. Yeah, it definitely speaks to the level of improvement and competitive nature of Mystery Man since he's come to us here in the XBL, just continually getting better and that eye is really honed in. Uh, we'd love to see more of that from him and the Mystery Machine is rolling onward. Congratulations to all these players on their AAA achievements so far in this season. It's very, very exciting stuff. We're going to go ahead and move on now to a slide, which, you know, in 
other cases would be populated, but in this particular case is not. Uh, it's the Cooch Potatoes Hot Takes, and what we decided we're going to do is maybe just come up with a couple here for you on the fly, literally right in front of you on the screen. Here we go for me and Ox. Uh, who wants to start it off? You got one, Ox? Um, hmm. I got one at the All right. Okay, you start us. I think Speedy finishes first. He may not win the XBL, but he's going to finish first. Okay, I've got a hot take for the Kutch Potato. Um, Mike the Kutch plays a ridiculous amount, amount of games in the final three weeks of the season and comes on and takes the league by storm. I'm saying top top five finish. Now let me get all this. Boom. Okay. All right. Okay. I like it. I like it. I like this. Okay. I got another one. I got another one. <laughs> what do we got? What and do we and got? this this isn't personal. Fireball Max is going to lead the way <laughs> offensively at a, a ridiculous rate in the AAA. Somebody takes him down in the playoffs. I don't know who. Oh my. Max goes down in the playoffs. See, I'm not going to type the whole thing there because I was already trying to edit the other one. You think he finishes first? It's a hot take. It's a spot. I think he finishes first place and does not win the World Series. Okay. I like it. I like it. Now, that's, that's a strong take in the AAA. And I think we got another one. I'm going to say nobody in either league breaks 70 homers that's a that's a callback from mike's hot take a few seasons ago about nobody breaking 75 and astronaut was able to do it well there's no astronaut here uh so who's gonna fill that power hitter vacuum do we even have one someone's got to come out and, and do it you'd have to think that they just it's in the, it's in the number someone will hit a dinger or 70. i think black coffee got close actually in the triple a we'll see um we'll see i know he's a uh three outcome kind of guy but he loves to hit some dingers so we'll see if if coffee can get up there and fireball i think he's hit a lot more home runs this season than normal um let's see if we can come up with anything else spicy here i'll take one more if you got one more we'll put it on there okay, go ahead I, I didn't actually have one i was saying we'll put one more on here if you got one what do you think I think we blew, we blew uh, well dry unless you come up with one now. Okay, okay. To the same, I'm just gonna stay on the same wavelength here. I think, and this is his year to do it because there's no Weaver, there's no Ashnod. Uh, like we said, a lot more parity in the XBL. That would seem to pave the way for Lazy even more this year. But I'm going out on another hot take limb. I'm gonna say Lazy does not win another World Series. That's a huge take, honestly, with this field. So I like it. I like this set we have. We got Speedy finishing first, maybe not winning the XBL, but finishing first. Mike plays a ridiculous amount of games in the final week, three weeks of the season and takes the lead by storm. I'm saying top five finish. That's from Ox. Max goes down in the playoffs. Crazy one. Nobody in either league breaks 70 homers. Not so crazy. Just kind of a call. Would love to see it happen, though. And Lazy does not win the World Series. I mean, that's, that's as hot as they come. We'll have to check back on these and see how they pan out. Yeah, uh, might might be too hot of takes. Might have got a little bit too hot up in the kitchen, but um, right now we're cooking. We, I like them. Let's see how they pan out. Yeah, we'll revisit these. Maybe add to them as the season goes on. Maybe remove them if they get broken or, or messed up. So uh, exciting stuff here in the XBL. We'll we'll take over the hot potato takes uh, until we see Mike from here. It's all good. Let's move on now to our plays of the week. And there was a lot of these ones submitted this week. I think like four or five different players I'm talking submitted a diving catch that led to a double play in, in either the left or right field gap. We're going to start off with this one from Wishbone because Wishbone doesn't usually end up on the highlight reel. He's usually on the not so highlight reel. Yeah, this might be the first uh, recorded. Uh, I actually posted two really good plays. Might be the first. Uh, and look, RNG's taking over the replay feed. But usually Wish is on the wrong end of these types of plays. 
where no matter the fielding stat, his guy's going to drop the ball on a dive. Uh, or do you know a lot of times it'll just hologram right through and it'll just go right through his player they'll just they just won't use their glove so it's nice to see wish uh you know make a great play and this is with the bases loaded too against luke archer so a heck of a spot to do it even though they lost the game uh, you know great job wish bill yeah big catch there from wish and to go hand in hand with that like i said we had a lot of submissions on these types of plays from both leagues so here's one from the triple a this one is from black coffee absolutely going crazy diving in the left center field gap this time at shaka and look at this play just huge extension and it has to make a great throw to second to get the runner in time yeah and this is shout out to black coffee right here i want to he's he's one of those teams that definitely sacrifices on speed as we all know the banjos uh you know his team last year was the same way no not a lot of speed on this team and you got to really time your dive well. Look how late he times this dive at the very last possible second. So very well played there from Coffee. And then again, the crazy amount of these like double plays from the outfield on uh, ridiculous catches. So if you got left out this week, we really apologize. But uh, we felt like these were two of the better plays in the bigger moments. So great job here, Coffee. Yeah, huge plays here from two of these players. Just to give you an example of the, the defensive capability amongst both leagues, you know, everybody can can flop out there with the best of them into those gaps. It's insane the amount of plays, like I said, we saw this week on that end. We'll move on to play number four. This is a big one. The pitch from Diesel crushed to center, and that's Sweaty Betty walking it off for the Plum Island Pirates in a 0-0 ball game after Diesel had pitched eight and two-thirds scoreless. Yeah, we saw Carmelo Soprano. If you look at her, she's on fire, not... Not easy to keep a pitcher on fire into the ninth inning. So she was dominating this game in a, in a gridlock 0-0 tie. And honestly, this is a great play by D. Silly. Timed the dive perfectly in center, but sweaty Betty, she just she was too sweaty. She just got too much barrel all over this and just got it up out of Emerald for the walk-off dinger. Yeah, it's Big a great win for the Pirates. Great win. Yeah, great play there for the Plum Island Pirates here from the pitcher's perspective. This was submitted by both players of both perspectives. Uh, this one, I like to get the home run, you know, from the pitch and then into the seats. I like that. And that's just a huge, huge moment. Got to feel good for Rise, who hasn't had a ton of success or a ton of runs early yet in this season. Yeah, you know, Rise has a few Ws, but not a lot of offense. And, and hats off to Diesel because... Ever since he's joined us, he's always been the type of guy who will clip the other guy's great play as hosted in the channel. So hats off to D-Sill. Yeah, great sportsmanship there as we slide up now to play number three. This one was from the match of the week last week between myself and Pizza. And it's a play I was I was pretty proud of this one when I made it, that's for sure. Yeah, we probably we didn't have your audio, but I bet you were going pretty wild when you made this play. That was a sick, uh, sick grab. Yeah, the over the Saved shoulder grab. Run. Saved two runs. Yeah, I, I had thought for a moment there that I was going to get burned by the reliever, and uh, it ended up being all right. I did get burned in this game, though, even though I had gotten some injuries and some pitchers out of the game in my favor early on. So shout out to Pizza for another, you know, extremely competitive and insane series that we always seem to play. We played a scrim earlier today that ended in a walk-off. Uh, you know, the pair That's of us putting up like surprising. 15, 20 hits apiece. So... Uh, it, it, it always seems to go that way with pizza and that you know great plays from great games that's how it goes that was a wacky set you guys played in this game in particular but wow what a play and uh five bar d getting it done now we're heading on to play number two and this one's a little bit different it's actually a relay for mystery man who misses the ball initially in the outfield you think diesel's home and away scoring in this nothing nothing game and missed Absolutely burns him. A great throw from Shannon Blake to the cutoff, 88 power, and then the cutoff throw, 99 power, gets the runner at home plate. Huge. Yeah, this one, uh, until you see the top play, this one was my vote for the top play of the season so far. I mean, a ridiculous cut and relay. This is one of my favorite parts about baseball, Dwayne, is, are the little things like this. The small ball, uh, the defensive side of the game. And I don't know if Blake should have or could have made that catch initially, but what, like what a transfer. You see the great throw and no one uses the cutoff man, but gets it into the perfectly to the cutoff man and a perfect throw and tag out at home. Uh, great play by the missed defense. 
yeah timing was everything on that play you needed to, you know he needed to to be perfect with those throws to get it done yeah like you said good utilization of the the cutoff you don't see that all the time but that's you know very very uh pleasing to the eye in a baseball game to see it's you know defense work efficiently like that and now we've got our play of the week here numero uno and this one comes from red rock and the wishbone Ash, the astronauts down three nothing in a game versus mama Junjun, and he crushes the three run dinger to tie it up and eventually win this one four to three yeah what a what a clutch spot here for the astronauts and uh you know that ball ain't getting out of many parks wishbone maybe a hair early on this but a big moment for the astronauts i mean mama june i can speak to this personally he's he's tough to hit against now and he'd really pitched a good ball game to be shutting wishbone out for eight in a third inning um but just a horrifying spot to give up a three-run homer and then hit gave up a walk-off home run after this i believe so a big w for wishes astronauts here uh getting the sweep and absolutely stealing one from the up and coming uh mama june's having a heck of a rookie season yeah he's had a great week uh but got burned here against wishbone he got a little bit of that veteran you know veteran electricity there late in the ball game in the xbl it's never over till it's finally over and you know that's that's when you learn in those moments for sure uh shout out to wishbone for getting it done and shout out to everybody who submitted some plays this week we had a ton of plays a lot of them really similar uh so i had to pick and choose a few of them uh but it was really really a good submission let's keep submitting a lot more lots of different kinds of plays too that's that's a good way to get up here to show us something we haven't seen in a long time it's exciting stuff yeah, we ought to do a uh, like an end of the reel highlight or something, Dwayne, where um, a lot of the ones that aren't shown on match of the week are still worthy plays. We just try to to filter out the five that are, you know, maybe the most worthy um, because there was a lot of great, great submissions over the last three weeks. And we really appreciate everyone clipping the plays and, and keep clipping them um, because we'll try to put something together for you guys. But uh, hats off to all these guys making these great plays. Yeah, shout out to everybody in the XPL getting your games in, making it happen as we push forward now towards the middle of the season and then the playoffs once again in season 14. Uh, you know, that'll do it for us here on the roundup tonight. Uh, but it's been a really, really exciting tons of content. Good to be here with you for almost an hour here on this roundup, Mr. Ox. Yeah, absolutely, man. It was a good time. We had a lot of content to go over and uh, we appreciate the stats uh, being kept by Wishbone, of course. And and again, for all the submissions and and for you guys, thanks for everything. And and Dwayne, thanks for producing, man. That's it's uh, not an easy job to cast and produce, guys. Uh, absolutely, thank you, Ox, for always being available. Thank you to all of our casters who have made it happen. Like I said, in my absence uh, late last season and early into this season uh, due to work. So, uh, just a huge shout out for everybody who stepped up to the plate. Shout out to Wish for keeping the stats and and everybody who makes this happen. All the players. Let's let's keep the train moving. Let's keep the ball rolling. Season 14, then 15. Whether that's on season SMB three or SMB maybe four now that we've gotten a little bit of hide nor hair news of it um in the past week so we'll see what happens this spring we'll see when this season wraps up if that's going to be you know a bit of a lull and extra off season for us if we go to the next game but that's a discussion for a later date um shout out to everybody again thank you so much for being here we'll see you again later on match of the week this week and have a safe and pleasant evening everyone later guys